Okay, so welcome. Thank you for that introduction. So my name is uh, Sebastian or Sebad Leersneider. Uh, I'm one of the co-project leads for the All of Some project. So I hope you've come for that. So I'm going to explain about some and how to use it. Uh, professionally, I am uh, founder and CEO of a company called Torium. Uh, we do, like, we are based in Belgium, uh, so we do most of our services in Belgium. If you want to hire our services uh, abroad, we are pretty good at threat modeling and threat modeling training. So feel free uh, to get in touch on that. In my volunteer time, I really spend on uh, on OWASP and, in particular, relevant for here, OWASP SAM project. Now, what I'm going to do is, uh, first of all, uh, going to give you like a crash course on using SAM. Uh, a little bit like explaining what it is and what structure is and then how to actually use this uh, with a couple of use cases. Uh, and then the second part is providing you with extra resources because the framework itself is great, but you'll need extra help through tools, through help from others, through training to, to actually do this. So that's the second part of this session. So first of all, what is this SUM thing? SUM, SUM is a maturity model and why do we why do we need a maturity model? Um, well, the great thing with, uh, with, with the maturity model, it helps you to iterate and to improve over time because implementing a secure development lifecycle, uh, I would say program or improving your, your AppSec game doesn't come like overnight. It takes you some time. You need to improve over time. And Sam provides you with, a, with an iterative way to do that. It also provides you with clear um, expectations on each of the security practices that you're going to look at. Uh, but above all, SAM is really good at measuring what you're doing in terms of AppSec. Uh, am I doing testing? Am I doing training? Am I doing incident response? Uh, how, how good am I at doing that? SAM is actually the framework for measuring your maturity in those areas. And I would say the, the 10 seconds, I would say, Elevator pitch is some helps you to measure your activity and if you can measure it, you can manage it. And that's really the biggest added value of OWASP SAM. Besides also being, I would say, the best open source way of doing this. And there are some alternatives, uh, but in most cases they're not open source. So what's the, I would say, the story for the different personas to use this or using this? For a CISO, it's really to have something that you can demonstrate to your management or your stakeholders that you're, you're dealing with this. And this is not a, I would say, a one-stop activity. It's a journey. So you'll have to show some progress. For a developer, it's really for, because when you, once you start to understand how some is structured, it's not only up to, to, to the developer, it's all the stakeholders involved and all the security practice around that. So it's not up, only up to the developer. For a project manager, this is gold in terms of like understanding how to implement this shift left thingy uh, in, in like uh, gradual steps. Um, and also what, uh, what some provides you is a way to measure also your suppliers. Uh, what are you doing? Uh, and instead of just asking them like, okay, how are you doing it? What are you doing? Just kind of say, okay, provide me your SAM profile. What is, what are you doing? And that's, that's really helpful. Uh, we've even done uh, or used SAM in Belgium as part of public tenders where providers had to explain what they were doing. So that's, for that, it's really, really great. Um, so what's, uh, uh, what is great about it? It's measurability, it's actionability, it is the, uh, the fact also that SAM itself is technology agnostic. It's really a framework that explains what you need to do, not specifically what kind of tools you need to do, what kind of technology you need to use it for. This is being used by small organizations. Uh, last year we did a survey of, uh, with our SAM users. You have, I would say, organizations up to 100 uh, people that using this, but you also have like organizations over 100,000 people using this. So you can use it in different sizes, in different verticals, different kind of uh, tools. So enough about I would say pitching this. Since you're here, you understand why why you should probably be looking at it. What does this model look like? What's the structure of uh, of OWASP SAM? Now SAM itself is. Um, build around 15 security practices and explain which ones there, there are. Um, and these practices, they have two streams. Uh, in each of these streams, there are activities in an increasing level of maturity. 
uh, where the, you start first with the level one activity, basically like the, the basic stuff, and then you get better at it, adding additional activities in each of these streams. Now, there is five so-called business functions, ranging over governance, design, implementation, verification, and operation. So those are the five groups of business functions that typically tie like on like, okay, how do I organize this stuff? Then how do I cover my design activities? How do I cover my implementation activities? How do I test this and how do I operate this? And each of these business functions has three security practices in them. I'll show that you, you the overview. Um, and each of these security practices, you will be able to measure and improve over time. So that's, that's how that works. So this is the, the big overview of the model. And you have all these 15 security practices in here. Uh, you have the, you typically will start with strategy metrics. Uh, you can tie this into your compliance frameworks. Typically you will have links to that. Education and guidance is really important as a foundational cornerstone activity. You have to teach people why you're doing this and how you can do this. There's also the whole cultural aspect of creating community, providing an AppSec champion program and so on. So that's your governance. Um, the design is really about understanding your threats. This is a risk-driven model. If it's not a uh, riskful uh, say application, you should probably not do too many application security activities. So understanding risk uh, classification of your applications, understanding threat modeling, tying that into your security requirements, uh, understanding what is important and what not. Then also having uh, architectural activities around that, uh, understanding what kind of uh, modules are you using, what kind of dependencies would, do you have, what kind of um, design patterns can you reuse uh, in, in your organization for your applications. Those are typical design activities uh, and design security practices. Implementation is about secure build, secure deployment. It's about understanding your defects, man like measuring them, providing you with, with trends and, uh, uh, and feedback. Obviously, you want to test this stuff. Uh, what you've deployed in terms of architecture, in terms of software uh, testing that requirements driven testing and security testing is in there. And then obviously uh, you're operating your software. So incident response will probably be an activity you will need uh, in there. You need to patch this stuff, not only your own stuff, but also any dependencies. Uh, and then, okay, how do you handle this data? And last but not least, there's legacy management in there. So. Uh, a very small part of security practice, but probably the, the, the most painful one in your day-to-day -day activities. So that's a very short overview of all the security practices in here. Now, how does this work? I've taken one security practice here uh, about uh, requirements-driven testing. And you have uh, two streams here where they that are going to be in increasing, num increasing maturity. So the, the very basic level is opportunistically finding basic vulnerabilities and other security issues. So that's level one. Level two is performing this and applying this and linking this to your own application against your own security requirements. And then making sure you say keep the same level uh, when there's changes, when you do maintenance and so on. So you have increasing level of maturities. Now beware in most of the cases, you're not going to aim for a level three in each of these security practice. It's going to be very expensive and very time consuming. So you need to be able to figure out what kind of level is good enough for you. So you have two streams in here. You have the control verification and the misuse abuse testing. Uh, one is more what I would call like the positive uh, stream, checking what kind of control are in there and if they're working as expected, where the abuse testing is more like fuzzing, uh, stress testing, understanding, uh, how that uh, application behaves. And then you have the activities in each of these streams that are clearly described uh, and, uh, and I'll show you how you, uh, how you can implement that. So this is one security practice and the structure of that. Now, how do we use that? How are, can we use some uh, to understand where you are, but also to, to build your own roadmap? You can use some, in first, of first typical activity is going to be assessing where you are. So you're going to use this as an assessment tool. So imagine that we're going to test for secure software security controls as the first activity in the example I've just explained. The way that we're going to assess this is through questionnaires. And you're going to ask yourself, in this case, do you perform security testing in your organization? In, 
And in the way that SUM is structured and the questionnaires are structured is they're testing both for coverage, and so what kind of applications are you, are you covering all your applications, to what kind of extents are you doing this testing, but there is also, and this is something new about OWASP SUM 2.0, there's qualitative criteria there as well, because we want to reach a certain objective. So in this case, do you test your applications for the correct functioning of the standard security controls? Uh, in this case, it's either you don't, some of them, at least half of them, or most of them, in terms of the applications and uh, that, that you're covering in your scope. But that's, I would say, that's the easy part. The harder question is, okay, what kind of testing does this involve? It should at least cover authentication, access control, crypto, like the basic stuff that's in there. If it's not covering that, you should probably start with that first. And also, it's good that you test, but whenever there's changes in any of the specific security controls in there, you should probably retest this. So these are the, the so-called quality criteria that are relevant for this particular security activity. And that's really how th all the security activities within some have these quality criteria. So whenever you're doing an assessment, you not only have to ask yourself, are we doing this activity, but also are we doing this in a, I would say, correct or in an efficient way. So that's that's what uh, that's what in there. So and the levels are from zero to three. Zero is you're not doing it, uh, which sometimes can be uh, can be relevant. Ad hoc, in terms of level one, you're being more consistent or repeatable than level two, and you have continuous improvement at level three activities. So that is, in general, the sum uh, levels, the sum maturity levels. You can compare that a little bit to CMM. Th there's more levels in there, but uh, we kept it uh, uh, restricted to three levels. So what are the use cases? You can measure uh, where you are. Typically, you will then, like, okay, see, okay, where do we need to go? Uh, what is our 2B situation? So you need to do a gap analysis. You can uh, demonstrate that you're getting there and you can ongoingly uh, measure where you're doing, what you're doing while you're implementing, or adding these security capabilities within your own scope for your product, for your team, for your business unit or for your organization. Yes. So in itself, that is what, uh, what SAM is really about. So how are we going to use this or how are we going to implement this? So there is, first of all, you have to understand what you're doing, you prepare, you assess, you set your target, you define your plan, you implement it, you roll it out, and you repeat, and that's a, it's, a, it's an ongoing journey. Uh, security, you're never done with that. Um, so how does preparation start? Or it's really key here is understanding your scope, uh, understanding who's involved, and socialize this. Make sure people, and not only, I would say, management, but also involved teams, developers, understand what you're going to do. Scoping is, cr is, is really important here. Uh, and my advice when you're starting with this, start small. Start with a team that you understand. Try it out, see what works, and from there learn, and then go to other teams or other products. So it would really depend on your organization and your structure. What I would also highly recommend, and it's already, I would say, one of the security practices in there, is threat assessment, is tie this to the risk classifications of your application. Uh, you will have like high, medium, low risk applications or like your top 10 applications. Take the ones that are really important for you and that you know, for instance, in the next couple of months or next half year or year will have like an important release that you can help them out with this in terms of like, okay, what kind of AppSec controls or activities are we going to do? and tie that to their release. And so that you're doing this not out of the blue, but you're linking this to actual work being done. So that's the first preparation step. Then obviously the assessment. The assessment itself can be typically, and we're going to release, an, uh, I would say, a best practices for assessment. But at this stage, we have a, a quite a couple of tools, and I'll show some of the tools. Uh, but you want to understand where you are with these 15, 15 security practices. And you can do that through workshops, through questionnaires, through um, capturing what you're doing. And there's different tools in here. Uh, and let me maybe switch to, um, um, to the website first to show you where you can find this stuff. Uh, and then I'll show you how we can uh, do, this, uh, do this assessment as a very short demo. So first of all, how do you find some? It's oaspsum.org. So that's the easiest uh, way to start. 
And so you'll, uh, you'll come here uh, on the home page. You'll have, okay, getting started. How do I assess myself? Benchmark stuff. There's a full model in here that you can browse. Uh, for instance, you have the requirements driven testing that I just shown you where you have the same kind of like stream A, stream B in here. So when we're going to um, assess, uh, we're going to uh, first use the tool. So we go to the sum assessment. There's different ways and tools to use that. So you can download the spreadsheet to actually do that. So there's a so-called toolbox um, that is part of the latest release that you can download is some spreadsheet. I've already done that. I have it open up right here. Now, what does this mean is that you can for these questions and if we go to the, uh, the, the requirements driven testing here oh that's not what i wanted to do so you have this question here do you test your applications for the correct functioning here you have the two requirements and then you'll have a drop down here in that answer where you can uh, say, okay, I'm either not doing that, some of them, at least half of them. And once you start to fill this in, uh, there will be scorecards there that will be increasing. You see a little bump here because we've answered that. Uh, and you also can even create your own roadmap uh, and your roadmap chart out of that. And so this, I'm not going to spend too much time on this. I would highly recommend to, uh, to use this and test this yourself. So from the project, you have this, uh, this spreadsheet that is being shared. Uh, we also have other tools that are uh, made available. Um, so there's some wise, which is like a, a single page application that you can host yourself. Uh, we also have uh, other free tools like uh, Sami from Codific. And we have some of the guys here. That's one of our sponsors that also has a free online version. And let me show you that. I think it's here or I have it open here where you have like uh, an easy interface to actually see, okay, for this verification requirements driven testing. Okay, do we do you test these applications? Uh, and then you can like say no or some of them and it will generate also a report out of that. Yes. So it's a other interface, same results, but you can also export that then in the, in the toolbox format and so on. So that's uh, enough tools to start, I would say with your assessment. Obviously, that is only a starting point and you want to do something with that. So it's good to know where you are. Uh, and most of the times you, you know why you're doing this. It's probably because you need to add other security activities. What you need to do is set your target. So depending on your risk profile, your risk appetite, um, your the kind of activities that would add value uh, to your uh, to your AppSec program and also if, you, if you're, you really want to do a lot of security requirements testing, well, it would be good to also have your security requirements in the first place. So there's dependencies between these security uh, activities. So link that, use them. So out of that, you'll, you'll be able to set your, uh, your, set your own targets. And based out of that, you'll have a gap. You can start your plan. You can start to implement that. Just do it uh, and measure your progress uh, with some. Um, so implement and there's lots of tools. Uh, I'll show you a couple of links to guidance uh, out of the, the model itself. Uh, but you roll it out, you test it out, you learn from what you've done and you iterate. It's typically from my experience, you won't be able to have like a meaningful improvement o over the course of a couple of weeks. It will take you at least three to six months, maybe a couple of years, depending on the size and like the fastness of your organization in terms of change. This is change and change management, so it will take you some time. Do know that in the in the SUM toolbox, the spreadsheet, there is a roadmap where you can like uh, map this out and uh, and create your own roadmap uh, and see how how good you're doing. And you you want to balance what the so-called we call like SAM velocity, like the number of activities that you're going to include in each iteration. Uh, in uh, in a way that it's feasible, matching your budget, matching your time, and so on. So that's that's how I would say you can and should be using OWASP SUM. So so far the model. We also have quite some resources uh, for you to uh, to use. What we've added is guidance. Guidance in terms of like what kind of other projects are uh, are 
um, uh, impactful. We've added references to other activities, other standards, other, um, other frameworks through OpenCRE. Uh, if you ha are not familiar with that, I would highly recommend to have a look at it. I'll show you in a minute what it looks like. Um, we've added best practices, external tools, resources, and so on. So for each of these security activities, there's links to, okay, how are, we, how are we going to do this? What kind of tools are useful there? So, and uh, the way that you can find that is there's stream guidance and explain an explanation of how that works on, uh, on the OWASP some website. Anyway, let's, for instance, uh, so you can find explanation about guidance here, but let's go to the model. And let's take, for instance, education and guidance, another one where education and guidance is like really two streams, training awareness, like basic, providing like basic training, awareness training, then role-based training, and then uh, additional guidance, and then have a security champion program and so on. So it's, these are the activities that you have in here. So if we go to the training and awareness, you'll see this, you have the level one, level two, level three activities that are in here. Uh, each time changing with a new description of the activity, your questions, your quality criteria. And it's here at the bottom that you have the guidance. So for each of these security practices, we'll have a link to guidance uh, that's actually linking up to Google Docs. So we have a lot of um, materials available as part of a Google uh, share that you can find through our Slack channel and the pointers there. And in this case, uh, so this one is linked up to uh, education and, uh, and guidance. There's a link to OpenCRE. And so OpenCRE, in this case, it's, uh, uh, it's really like a, a collection of mappings. So how do we map this activity, for instance, to ASVS um, or to other, uh, other, uh, other uh, like active standards and frameworks that are linked in OpenCRE. And OpenCRE covers a lot. Uh, so there's a lot of other mappings in there, and there's even now an open CRE chat in there. So you have, if you want large language models, obviously you'll, uh, you'll find them uh, here as well. So that's, um, I'm not going to log in here. So that's open CRE, um, but there are also links to other stuff like OWASP Juice Shop, really relevant as like a tool to do awareness training. It's an on-purpose, insecure, uh, web application, OWASP top 10 for awareness, uh, other tools. Uh, there's also links, for instance, to, uh, to other uh, frameworks. And there's BSIM, uh, another uh, framework where you can link to and so on. So that's uh, how the guidance works. So for each of these security activities, uh, we have that. The great thing is that this is provided by the team. If you come across uh, a particular mapping, a particular standard, a particular best uh, best practice, you can also add this yourself. And so there's a link here uh, to a Google form. So if it's not in there, just like suggest that to us, you fill in the form, we'll vet that and we'll add it to the, to the doc. And you can't add it directly to the doc, but we've added a, a quite an easy way to add that kind of guidance. So they're crowdsourcing additional guidance through our, uh, with our community. So that's, um, that's how guidance works. Now, another question we get a lot also is, okay, this is all good and fine, and, but I'm probably going to need some, some help as well. Uh, do you have like uh, an organization that you can point us to that can help us? Now, that's a little bit of a tricky question. Uh, as we're an open source community, we can't just say like, okay, uh, just go to Aram's company or whatever company. Um, so what we've done is we've actually started a list of practitioners. And so the only way to get on this list is for the practitioners to ask that themselves. Uh, and then and they have to provide a description of all of some related services. It has to provide, it has to have at least like one backlink uh, to what we're, uh, what we're doing. And if uh, let me show you where you can find that. <coughs> it doesn't mean you have to use them. Uh, there's probably others as well. But we've gathered at least like, so there's, so very clear, uh, it's, it's not something we endorse. We just provide this as a service because we get this question a lot. And so there's a whole lot of uh, organizations in here that can help you with some implementations from smaller to bigger organizations. So the only way is to, so and if you are providing some services and you're not in here, you can ask 
uh, to get added to this list. You have a question, Do sir? Do you recommend we have a SAM assessment done? We had a SAM assessment done. Is that it's on? not on. You should probably like. Yeah. Yes. We had a SAM assessment done by a third-party vendor a, a couple of years ago. Mm -hmm. It went pretty good. Okay. But I was w curious, is your recommendation that you could do a self-assessment, or do you recommend going with an independent third-party to do the SAM assessment? Um, you can do it either way. Uh, so you can do a self-assessment. If, you if you're up to it, if you understand it well enough, then no problem. Uh, if you think it was worthwhile to have a third party help you out with it, like you did, then that's fine as well. What, I, what we get a lot is, specific, specifically in your case, is like people contacting us like, okay, help us find a third party uh, vendor that's going to do that. And that's exactly what it is. This is it's, it's a list of, of these, of these vendors. I don't know what vendor it was and if they're on here, if they're not in here, I would recommend you to go back to them and make sure that they're on here. Yeah, and well. uh, one of the things we were concerned about is if we do it ourselves, what credibility is it yes. gonna have with the executive management? Oh yeah, we yeah. assessed ourselves as a uh, five on everything or whatever. Yeah, right? that you would know. be great. Yeah, you know, <laughs> uh, yes. you yeah. know uh, yeah. so having a, uh, a recognized third party vendor is gonna have more pull and backing for yeah. that assessment. Yeah, that makes perfect sense, yes, indeed. Um, one other question you already covered, so we keep mentioning uh, BSIM. Mm -hmm. One thing I've always been confused about is what's the pros and cons of, uh, of doing a SAM assessment versus a BSIM assessment? Uh, it's, um, BSIM and SAM actually have the same origin. Uh, the BCM was a uh, fork of the original version one of Open SAM, uh, it was called then. SAM is much more focused on providing you guidance and for you to do it yourself or to you help the, or to do it with one of the helps of the practitioners. Uh, BCM is a little bit of a different beast. It's, it's, it's there, I would say, tallying up the kind of activities that typical Synopsys customers are doing uh, because BCM is from Synopsys. Uh, which is interesting. I think it's also interesting for us to understand uh, what, what kind of activities are being done. And they have quite a large customer base. Uh, but outside of, the, I would say, the, BC, uh, the Synopsys customer base, there's probably a whole lot of other organizations that want to implement uh, an SDL. And OpenSAM is like the open source alternative for that. And is there a benchmarking function for SAM as well where you can compare against other companies? I will come back to that very soon. Right. Yes, we have. <laughs> yes, we have that. Yes, yes, absolutely. Okay. Another thing uh, is... Um, is okay, we, we have in the need, we have some, but we also we have other frameworks. Uh, and certainly here in the US, NIST SSDF probably rings a bell. Um, we did a full mapping on SSDF and it's the other way around. So if you want to figure out, uh, if you're doing some, what kind of SSDF controls you're already doing, or if you're doing SSDF and you say, okay, it's probably not granular enough, I need more practical, I would say uh, guidance on some of these SSDF controls, then there's also a way back. Uh, so there is this here's a direct link into that. So it has a two-way uh, mapping. Beware, it's not a one-on-one -on -one mapping. Eh? Sometimes it's one, b some activity is part of another NIST SSDF activity or the other way around. But that's, that's fully explained in, in there. And so we have that uh, available. Another resource that, uh, that is qu certainly quite useful that we uh, recently released is a training. Uh, so with help of, uh, of one of our sponsors, uh, the Codific guys, and Aram is here, uh, you can wave. Uh, he's, uh, he's going to be famous because he's also on here. Um, I would highly recommend to have a look at it. It's, a it's a fully, fully free. It's open source, obviously, uh, training online. Uh, the link is there uh, in the previous page. Uh, it's 79 lessons, five hours of content where uh, it's, it's being explained. So a little bit the same what we're explaining here, but a little bit more detail. Uh, we've reused actually the, the one day training materials that we're doing and teaching uh, on a regular basis as part of the conferences. And we've merged that onto an online self-paced uh, learning platform. Uh, so highly recommend it. Uh, we've just released it last month, September, I think, and there's already like more than five, you know, 400 people that are actually uh, have started it. I don't know if it all finished it, but at least they started. It's <laughs> so it's, uh, uh, but the first reviews are really good. So um, uh, highly, uh, I would say, have a look at that. Um, and then uh, coming back to the question, okay, how do we compare ourselves 
uh, because uh, it's, in, it's interesting to find out where you are, but the question is, okay, how can I compare myself to others? We do have a benchmark, uh, but it's, uh, we're, adding, we're adding data sets to it. So we, have, we don't have data available yet, uh, but we're starting to uh, accept uh, submissions of data sets. Uh, there's a link here to a YouTube uh, page that it where Brian, Brian Glass, who is also running around here. So if you come across him, uh, speak to him. He's a really smart guy. Um, and he's, uh, he's collecting all this information. And I think we're going to probably publish the first benchmark report by end of Q1 next year. Uh, so that's what we're aiming for. If you're sitting on data sets of, of like some measurements, or if you know of people or customers or peers that have done some in the past or recently or planning it in the next weeks, please ask them to come to us. There's a benchmarking page. Uh, if you can't figure it out how to upload it, it's quite easy. Then just mail Brian and he will help you out as well. Okay. I think it's critical to now have like an, like an, a minimum number of data sets available to have some meaningful uh, comparison uh, information. Is that confidential when you submit it? It is going to be anonymized fully, yes. Uh, we, we are collecting metadata, uh, like the number of developers, what kind of region are you from, what kind of vertical are you from, but you absolutely are not, uh, it's not, easy, not even a field for your contact information. In a later edition, uh, now it's just submitting it, if you ever you want to like update your data set afterwards, in the next release of this benchmarking, we'll provide you with a unique link back so that you can update your own data set. But we don't know who you are and we don't want to know who you are. There is though, there is a question in there which is relevant if this is like a self-assessment or if it is a third-party assessment. Uh, going back to your earlier remark, we will weigh third-party assessment a little bit higher in the overall data set than self-assessments. Um, there's a little bit, uh, we're biased, we think that third party assessors will probably do a better job at it than self assessment, but that is definitely not always true. Uh, but so that's the, the benchmarking part. Um, one last thing, we do have a regular some user days where we have people that are implementing or using some, uh, sharing their information. We're actually having one this week as well. Uh, so uh, on next Wednesday, we have a some user day um, here uh, in, this, uh, in this location where we have Rob van der Weer, who is going to explain the open CRE and how that works. We'll have Tony explaining how threat modeling fits uh, the SUM uh, model. We'll have Aram explaining how they implemented it at a Fortune 500 and what the lessons learned are there. And in the afternoon, we'll, do, we'll have Brian, we'll do some deep dives and some round tables on, uh, on some as well. So we, at this stage, we still have a couple of seats free. So it's limited to 30 attendees. We are now at around 20. So this is definitely last minute if you'd want to join, but you can still join. Uh, so if you want to join, there is a, there's a link here, but it's also in the schedule. Uh, so you can still register for that if you want. If, it, if you have a problem, register, because this morning had a couple of people saying, okay, I can't register. Um, find me, send me an email, and uh, we'll definitely make it work. Yes. Um, we also plan on having these some user days on other global apps. Uh, in the past, we've done that. Uh, Pre-COVID, we also had some user days. Uh, during COVID, we did it online. Uh, but now we're really happy to do this in person again. So next year in Lisbon for the global app in Europe, we'll do one as well. And then in September in San Francisco, we'll have one again. Yes. So if you're interested in this, in contributing, uh, contact us. There's all kinds of channels to get in touch with us. Uh, I'll also share this slide deck. Uh, uh, I'll send a pointer to our Slack channel. Uh, the these presentations are also linked on our, on our website. If you can't find, or if you're not on the OWASP Slack workspace, the easiest way to get on there is to, um, again, uh, there's only one URL. You go to our OWASP sum. Uh, .org, and then there's a community, there's an FAQ, frequently asked questions, and you go to the bottom, and there is like, how can I join some Slack channel? So here's a direct link, but if you're not on the OWASP uh, Foundation workspace, you'll have to join the Slack community. And that's, the, that's really the only way to, uh, uh, to join that Slack channel, and that Slack channel 
uh, is right here, uh, where you also have pointers to the GitHub, the Google Drive, our YouTube, and, and our Meetup, and what have you. So, so that's, um, those are all resources. We do have uh, uh, a newsletter, so just uh, join that. If there's any new blog posts or tool updates, we'll definitely share those there. Uh, we did a survey uh, amongst our some user base last year around this time frame. This morning we presented the results. We'll also make that presentation available. But we'll also start a some uh, user survey in the next couple of uh, weeks. So have a look at your mailbox. Um, if you want to participate in that, make sure you're registered for our newsletters uh, or, or register for the training and you'll also get a request to, uh, to be involved in that, uh, in that survey. We do have monthly community calls uh, where we have like a one hour online session. Any question goes, if there is no questions, uh, we also do a deep dive on one of the practices uh, each second Wednesday uh, to get an invite uh, link, I would say register for our meetup uh, page. And that's it uh, from me. I want to thank uh, the sponsors and with that, I'm uh, at the end of what I wanted to share with you. <laughs> Any, we have a couple of minutes, a little bit ahead of time. Um, any questions, experiences? Yes, you want to share? Thanks, so maybe a little bit outside of Sam itself, but mm -hmm. I was wondering if, I mean, an assessment is always quite heavy, right? Especially yeah. if you have a bigger org. Have you had experience trying to do the assessment in a developer-friendly way, so to speak? Because some of those you know, tracks are really geared towards engineering, some of them are more central, and then maybe the central security team can just do it on behalf of yeah. you know, the yeah. team. So wha yeah. what would be advices you would give there? My advice would be you send a spreadsheet to the developer and then it will never work. Uh, yeah. So that's, <laughs> yeah, that's no. Yeah. <laughs> so th that's not going to work. So don't do that. Don't do that. What 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 we see working is you do this in a workshop mode. Uh, you you have you, you need to have somebody that understands some, uh, but you go and meet your developers or your oper operation DevOps team, and you have them tell you what they are doing, and you're mapping that yourself on some activities. Um, you also just explain the main I would say activities. But I would say never ever send the spreadsheet or expose the spreadsheet as such, as I, at least to, I would say, the, the developer teams. They really don't want to be exposed to that kind of level of detail. If you're an AppSec program manager, you want to have that understanding. But that's a, a different kind of use case. So workshop mode and the biggest benefit there is the user, is, is the, the raised awareness. That, that's right. Yes. Yes, yes, if you have a security champion program, yeah, rely, on rely on that, uh, piggyback on that, yes. Um, you will probably not start from scratch. Some of these things you're already doing, and some, if you're leveraging those, uh, those other activities, then yes, by all means, yes. Do you have a, um, do you know if some people are using it, um, sort of, a, a, or a lighter version within Teams? Because like, we did a BSIM, and now that's a very general picture, yeah. but like uh, we, we, we tried to do a, like a lighter version per team to see like where what's yeah. the maturity across our teams. Yes, we do have that actually. There is a, some implementation for developer teams, uh, which was recorded. It's, uh, we have uh, one of the core team members who has explained what kind of security practices are typical relevant for developer teams and how they how they can be using uh, some. So they don't need to understand all the security practice, but they have to have like a basic idea of threat modeling requirements and then, okay, how do we implement and test that? Yeah, yeah. There is a recording, There's so we have a YouTube channel, it's one of the pointers, and there is like uh, a sum for, for product teams presentation there that explains how to use some specifically on the developer scope uh, without, I would say, being exposed to the full, the full model. But yeah, so, and, and if you can't find it, uh, ask it on the Slack channel and we'll send you that, uh, that, you, that link. Yes. Uh, thank you for the presentation. The, uh, my question is the, uh, a bit specific one, but the, uh, we have the five governance, five the, uh, assessment section, and one of the assessment section is the training and awareness area. 
mm -hmm. the today you introduced the fundamental level of the our system training mm -hmm. i feel that this training contents is uh, uh, useful for this the items training and awareness area too uh, how about uh, you are cons uh, considering how how about what? Uh, how about we are considering? I feel this uh, fundamental was some training itself is useful for security awareness area. Mm -hmm. So the, the the setup of the training is there's there's different levels. Eh? So there's uh, the level one is a basic awareness training, uh, which can be repeated. So I would say once every year. You would probably want to update and change it in terms of topics because uh, uh, mm -hmm. don't do the same training every year. Uh, uh, what I would even recommend, and we've we've personally we've stepped away of the yearly training. We're splitting it out like in like a lunch and learn session every three four months on a specific topic, uh, and learn from that. Uh, otherwise, well, people will run away. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yes. We are the point yeah, of this. Yeah, Thank you. Yeah. Okay. All right. Any other questions? Okay. The, Great. the one feedback, at least from a con practitioner perspective, is there are some controls that kind of repeat at various uh, domains. For example, if you took threat modeling, yes, it repeats in multiple places. So you're pretty much asking the same question, but in different languages, in different phases of the assessment. Mm -hmm. uh, though it means threat modeling, it might not be called threat modeling. It would you would probably call it risk assessment in an application context. But just kind of wondering is. Is that for a reason? Is is there is there is there a cleanup kind of an activity? Because it just seems some of them are redundant. Not all of them, but no, some of them. No, I, I can understand where you're coming from. Certainly in the architectural review, yeah. uh, security practice, there is some kind of overlapping uh, with the threat modeling. It's the it's the context uh, and uh, the setup that is different. Threat modeling is like a pre-implementation. Threat modeling is like pre-implementation. Whereas an architectural review is like, okay, we're reviewing an already existing design and, uh, and, and architecture. So, uh, but yeah, there is certainly some overlapping uh, yeah. terminology and activities there. That's, that's true. Yeah. Yeah. But uh, if, if you see ways that we can improve this, don't hesitate to let us know. It is the, the, the framework is not set in stone. We're releasing 2.1. Uh, this year, but it will be all the guidance. We're not structurally changing the model itself, uh, but we're definitely going to see, okay, are there uh, practices in there that can be streamlined or improved over the course of the next couple of years, then we'll do that. Uh, but we'll keep it stable. Uh, it's not going to change like every year. It's going to change like every three, four years. Yeah, but personally, I think yeah. the benchmarking is definitely going to be a yeah. big game changer because yeah. that's the only thing currently that at least from our customers' perspective, is 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 sticky waters when it comes to yes. BSIM, right? Yeah. Because like BSIM but you can has but you can help us with that. Yeah, I understand no, that yeah. you have. Yeah, some we need to include that in yes. our contracts too. Our exactly. Customers. Yes. All right. Uh, do you intend to tag the different practices, like developers, organizational, organizational or give them some s uh, in which specific area of the company that could apply? So I'm thinking about the. We are using um, vSIM to uh, evaluate the majority of our dev, dev teams. Mm -hmm. So all the practices do not, do not apply to uh, our developers. So do you True. have a way, do you intend to uh, maybe to have a way to tag the practices that are, um, that uh, would... Um, uh, currently it's not tagged like that, but I can see where it's coming from because some of the, uh, some of the questions, some of the activities will be relevant for development teams. Others will be more like overarching, like the governance questions. Um, so that so kind of tagging is not in there, uh, but I don't see that as very hard to add. So we can potentially add that quite easily. Yes. So if you think it's meaningful, by all means, yeah, let us know and we'll consider that for a next release. Yeah. Okay. Thanks. All right. With that, then uh, I would say enjoy the rest of the conference and then uh, see you next time. Thank you.